Welcome! The particle filter is an intuitive and widely implemented localization algorithm. Compared to the unscented common filter which intelligently samples points, the particle filter is a brute force solution with some unique properties. We'll cover the model setup, reviewing port and sampling, and then theoretically derive the algorithm. Following, we'll cover the implementation, some tips and tricks, and view a video example. Alright, let's get started. The particle filter is a non-parametric filter, meaning that the distribution is not determined by a fixed number of parameters. Compare this to a Gaussian, where the entire distribution is defined by its mean and covariance. With non-parametric filters, we can represent arbitrary probability distributions, and the granularity of these distributions scale with the amount of computation we choose to use. For example, the distribution shaded in gray here is multimodal. If we were focused on a parametric model like a Gaussian, there is no way to get a good fit. The model setup is the same as the unscented common filter, but we'll additionally consider when the sensor model is added of Gaussian noise. To put an exact name to what we're solving, the particle filter is a method of solving the recursive, nonlinear, discrete time estimation problem. I have a rigorous tutorial on important sampling, and I would highly recommend watching that, but here's a recap of the main steps. We first draw samples from a distribution f of x, and we want to transform these samples such that they represent the g of x. To do this, we calculate the importance weight of each particle, then we normalize to make it a valid probability distribution, and then resample. The reason we resample is to avoid carrying around a weight associated with each particle. By doing resampling, we can say that the set of particles represents g of x. We need to slightly rederive the base filter. We want each particle to represent the entire trajectory rather than our current time step. The derivation is extremely similar to the original base filter, so it'll go a little bit faster. We first apply Bayes' rule on y of t and add a normalization factor, then we simply use the Markov property. We can then apply a joint factorization and then clean up using the Markov property and remove unnecessary dependencies. Now let's satisfy this goal equation by induction. In the base case, we assume we have a prior belief of Bell of x naughts in which we draw n particles. This set of particles trivially satisfies being distributed according to Bell of x naughts. Next, in the induction step, assume at time t minus 1 we have a set of particles that represents bell of x of 0 to t minus 1. Recall in the original base filter, we have this propagation of where I am to where I am going to. This is the same thing we have with our new base filter. We don't need the integral because the state x t minus 1 is part of the particle itself. Thus, for each particle, we draw some noise and run it through our motion model. It is important to note that we draw noise independently for each particle. So even if we have two identical particles, the propagation result may not be the same. We now need to apply the correction step. By important sampling, we define our target distribution to be our goal distribution, bell of xt, and the proposal distribution is bell bar of xt. Consequently, we see that the importance weight is the scaling p of yt given xt. So by calculating the weights and then resampling, we get our new belief. And that's all there is to the particle filter. So easy, right? It literally takes like 20 lines of code. Repetition is key, so let's write out all the steps on one slide. We have an input distribution for time t minus 1, which is represented by a set of particles. We also have the action and sensor measurements. We first propagate all the particles through the motion model with the noise that is sampled individually for each particle. Then we compute the importance weights, and then we resample based on the distribution proportional to the weights. The output is simply another set of particles. Let's talk a bit about how to implement specific steps. Resampling is an important one. Madao systematic sampling is a very, very popular method. Essentially, we create these bins where the size is proportional to the weight. So say we have 8 particles here, then beta 8 is always going to be equal to 1. Step 2 is to draw a random number from 0 to 1. Whichever bucket it lands in, that's the sample we're going to take for output distribution. Then, assuming you want to draw m samples, in my visualization here m is equal to 8, but it doesn't have to equal the number of buckets. We increment by 1 over m and add the corresponding sample to our output list. There's two main benefits of this method. First, if a particle has importance weights greater or equal to 1 over m, we're guaranteed to sample it. This reduces the variance of our sampling algorithm. And we can efficiently implement this in O of m time, where m is the number of particles. The next subtlety is computing the importance weight. Remember the two different sensor models? Let's consider the additive Gaussian noise first. In this case, we have an analytical form of the distribution, so we can directly compute what p of yt given xt is. In the second case, we're going to simulate a sensor reading with our particle. We then assume that p of y given x is the same as p of y given our simulated sensor reading. 
We then further assume the sensor reading distribution. It could be anything of your choosing, but typically a Gaussian is used because if we actually had added a Gaussian noise in our sensor model, then we see that case 2 reduces to case 1. Now let's talk about some tips and tricks. The particle filter is an anytime algorithm, meaning that we can keep going as long as we have the time, and the longer we go for, the better the performance. So just keep adding particles until you actually have to use the results. Another common method is to keep adding particles until the weight of your resampled particles is greater than some threshold. For example, if you pick M points, but they happen to be the M lowest probability particles, you probably want to continue sampling. Another cool trick is that when passing in the input particles, just add some randomly sampled particles in the state space. If you happen to lose your correct state, this might add it back in. Worst comes to worst, you'll get a mismatched sensor reading, assign a low weight, and then lose the particle again. This is why the particle filter is so robust. It's also sometimes called survival of the fittest. Now let's take a look at an example. Here, all the red dots are particles which we initialized with a uniform random distribution. The green dot represents the most likely states. We see that with just a few time steps, the sensor readings immediately eliminate unlikely possibilities. Also note the multi-hypotheses that our particle filter presents with the different clusters of red points. The Gaussian filter would not be able to do that. And there we go, that's the particle filter. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.